Margaret, thank you so much for this interview with us. And um, so the first question I want to ask you is, is the worst behind us in terms of the pandemic? Well, in fact, we've recorded the, the, the highest number of cases in a week, just last week. So we are still in the accelerating phase of the pandemic. We are still very much in the, the thick of the battle. The difference is, though, we do know what to do and we have seen what works. And that's the public health interventions. That's avoiding the crowds. That's avoiding the closed spaces. And that's really doing your tracking and tracing well. And of course, we are approaching the time when we'll be able to add another tool to the kit, and that's the vaccines. We've had in Argentina a really long lockdown, and this has had effects not only in our economy, which was already fragile, it also affected the, the other aspects of public health, like mental health. What would you recommend to not think of the lockdown as the only way to manage the pandemic. Yes, yeah, so this is exactly why we say try to focus on targeting where the virus is so that you don't go to those extreme measures. Because you're exactly right, they have unintended drastic consequences on other aspects of the economy, people's livelihoods, but also as you quite rightly say, on people's psyche. It's a very stressful and difficult times. In many countries, also children have not been able to go to school. So you've limited their development, you've limited their social development, their educational opportunities. So these are huge prices to pay. We know very little about COVID-19 in general, and now we found out there's a new form of COVID-19. What do you think we have working for us in terms of approaching this new kind or this new form of the coronavirus? The important thing to know about the new variant is the main concern there is that there's an, it seems to be an increased rate of spreading, that it seems to be a bit better at spreading between people. So basically that doesn't change what we need to do. It doesn't mean we have to panic and think, oh my goodness, we're starting over because the advice is the same. It is don't come into close contact, don't be in crowded crowds, and don't be in crowded settings, you know, when you're in a room with a bunch of people and there's poor ventilation. Those are the moments when it's easy for the coronavirus of any form to transmit. Argentina is starting its vaccine campaign with the Sputnik vaccine, the Russian vaccine. What do you know about it? What information does the WHO have? We are speaking with most of the manufacturers, and we've certainly had some early conversations with the Sputnik, uh, the group Gamalea developing Sputnik, uh, and they will submit the dossiers and we will review them. And when we are satisfied that we have received all the data and we are satisfied with that data, we will provide emergency use listings for various um, vaccines at the moment. We have not provided an emergency use listing yet because it's quite a slow process. President-elect Joe Biden said, the worst is not behind us, it's ahead of us. Talking about the devastating effects that the pandemic has had in the United States, but also what can happen in terms of the next few months. What is your insight on this expression? So I think what President-elect Biden was trying to say, and it's an important message to get through, is to help people understand that there's a lot of work we need to do, to expect things to be difficult, not to think, OK, we've got the virus, the vaccine now, it's all good. You know, the vaccine won't work if people take that attitude. It's going to take time. We really need to bring the transmission numbers down. And also, how tragic to lose your life in the next couple of months when we will have, we have the solution, we have something that will really help us to beat this. Um, so it, with the vaccine, we're talking about the lives we will save in six months, 12 months. But we have got to save all lives now.